it starts right away. Yeah. Okay, everybody, now joined by Gareth Southgate. We'll start with the first questions from Simon Peach, the Press Association. Hi, Gareth. Um, a frustrating night. The fans made the news heard at the end, or some of them did. What's your thoughts on, on the evening as a whole? Well, I think um, it's probably a fair score line first and foremost. Um, we didn't do enough to win the game, didn't create enough clear-cut chances to win the game, but I don't think we deserve to lose it either. Um, I've got to give huge credit to Scotland. I thought they defended extremely well and they used the ball well. Um, we couldn't find um, the solutions. We we were we had moments down the sides, where, which is where the spaces were against them, but we weren't able to exploit those spaces. And uh, in the end... Uh, as I said not enough to win but this is a tournament and it's critical when you can't win not to lose and that's of course feels difficult in the last 15 minutes of a game like tonight where fans are desperate for you to to go forward and uh, abandon all, all shape um, because of course it's it's Scotland it feels like a unique occasion but we have to still approach it in the context that a point is still an important step towards qualification and ultimately qualification is the first objective for us. Thanks Simon. Next we go to John Cross in the mirror. Uh, Gareth, can I just ask you about Harry Kane? It's the second game running that was substituted. He just couldn't get into the game tonight, could he really? Is, is there a concern there? Is there a fitness issue? A couple of the TV pundits were talking about maybe he's been distracted by, by the, the transfer chat. It's not the Harry that we're used to. Is it what what happened tonight with Harry? Do you think? Uh, I think the whole team. You know, we we have got to look at the whole performance and um, our use of the ball, and um, you know, review where we can be better. And that, that that's right across the board. So it's not just about about one person. Um, it's, uh, it's Scotland. I, I thought marked him extremely well. Um, with the back five, there there isn't a lot of space, and of course, they uh, they managed to, you know, anything that was played up, they were aggressive, they defended well. So tonight we couldn't find the answers. We've got to go away, review the game, and find those answers for the game with Czech Republic. Thanks, John. Next we'll go to Duncan Wright from the Sun. Hi, Gareth. When it's uh, going wrong as it as it did today, um, I, I think many people wanted a, a, a change up, maybe to go with a fourth attacking player. But you, you kept it like for like with your substitutions and, and didn't change around then, and, and and that seemed to frustrate the supporters who, who, you know, obviously booed and let their feelings know through the game as well as at the whistle. Well, I would say we had a fourth attacking player in Mount throughout the whole game, so. Um, I think in those moments, if we had to chase to win um, with no consequence for conceding, then you might approach it differently. Or if we were behind in the game and we were chasing. But all the time, it's a night where it was a bit frantic. It wasn't a game where there was a huge amount of control. And um, you've got to make sure that sitting on three points as we did, we managed the tournament as well as the game. And... Um, it's easy to gamble towards the end um, and lose shape and then end up losing the, the, the game in the last five minutes and then you're kicking yourself for you know, not managing the tournament. And I understand we're at Wembley. It's a game against Scotland where everybody wants us to win. Um, we wanted to win. Um, but it is in the context of a tournament and the qualification is the first uh, and the most important thing. Thanks, Duncan. Next, we'll go to Alex Howell, BBC Sport. Hi, Gareth. Um, just said taking advantage of the space down the sides, what do you think the team needed to do better to create more chances? I think the timing of our movement rotation patterns um, could have been better at times. I think we could have been a bit more decisive um, in our decision-making in those areas. Um, but... Um, Again, I think Scotland also defended those areas really well. And as um, even towards the end, the, the one against one situations, they always had a second or a third man uh, across. So, look, it's a game we know we didn't hit the level we wanted to or need to. 
Um, but tonight we have to accept whatever comes our way. Uh, all I would say is, you know, I'm I'm totally understanding that as the manager. I totally understand um, anything that comes my way. What we need to do is make sure we get behind the players because, um, you know, there's a lot of young players that need the support of everybody. Um, most of them haven't been involved in a game like that before and they are unique occasions. They'll learn a lot, they'll bounce back from it, um, but they need the, everybody behind them. Thanks, Alex. Next to Matt Lord, The Telegraph. Hiya, Gareth. Just on that theme, um, are you angry that the fans booed so la- loudly at the end? And Do you think it was a bit unfair given you'd had a good performance in the first game against Croatia? No, I think um, our fans are entitled to react however they want and um, we're disappointed with our own performance and I totally understand their reaction. We're expected to beat Scotland. Um, they'll be frustrated by that. And, um, yeah, in the end, we've got, we've got to live with that and deal with that. Thanks, Matt. Next to Sammy Mockbell, Mail. Hi, Gareth. Much, much like you said on, on Sunday, not to get carried away with uh, the result over Croatia, is the message just kind of a similar one tonight, not to panic? Well, we know where we sit in the group. We know that we um, have a lot of work to do to improve our performances Um, but also we know in the context of qualification four points from two matches we're in a strong position so um, we we have to you know make sure that we get the third game right and um, make the right decisions around that Um, of course there's always fallout from any England performance that isn't at the level you want or doesn't get the result that you want but we are in the middle of a tournament. We are in the middle of a qualification group. We, we totally understand um, the reaction tonight, but our, our first objective is to qualify, and we're still on track to do that. Thanks, Sammy. Next, we go to Arales Ould Sada from VG Norway. Hi, Gareth. Um, you, you compare the, the, the reaction from the fans uh, booing and wanting you to attack, and then you talk about the, the need to stay calm and manage the tournament can that be difficult for you as a manager when you when you hear the excitement especially with the tournament being played in in London in front of the the English fans yeah but this was always something that I knew we were going to have to deal with and um, that was going to be a a challenging experience for the players um, especially with with you know quite an inexperienced international team so um I said before, just because you're at home doesn't mean that you win. You have to play well. And on uh, Sunday, we played well and we, and we got the result we deserved. Tonight, we didn't play as well, um, but we have to accept that. Um, as I said, I accept that as the manager. And um, we learn from the experience and we have a different sort of challenge now um, against the Czechs. Thank you. And next to Jacob Steinberg, Guardian. Hi Gareth, were you happy with Jack Grealish when he when he came on? It felt a little bit at times like he played a little bit too slowly, hung on to the ball a little bit too much. Well, we we put him on to to get into those one against one situations, and um, I thought he took players out of the game. He he um, you know he at times got them on the back foot, drove into the penalty area a couple of times, so. Again, I think with Jack, we've got to be realistic about um, what our expectations are with him when he, when he goes into a game. We know he can help, help us to uh, open up a defence in those sorts of moments. He nearly managed that a couple of times. But again, I thought Scotland defended very well against him. So, um, yeah, I, 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 was, I was pleased with what he did when he went on. Thanks, Jacob. And final question from Theo Squires, the Liverpool Echo. Hi Gareth, um, Jordan Pickford's had some difficult moments this season, but after injury, he finished the season strongly. He was a hero for you at the, the World Cup, and he's come into the Euros in good form. Made a great save tonight. Just wanted to know what you thought of his performance and how important he is for your squad going forward. Yeah, I thought his performance was excellent. You know, he, uh, as you said, has has always played well for us and uh, tonight was no exception very you know very important and not a, not a straightforward save in the first half in particular um, ball skidding around off the surface um, and and several situations where there was 
big crowd scene in the box and he came and punched with authority. So uh, I thought he had an excellent performance. Okay, guys, we'll conclude it there. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.